Today we're going to make a wood bending jig out of a muffler and two 2x4s. Two I've got everything here that will make this project and really there isn't a whole lot to make it, but there are some things that I need to explain. First of all, I will be using 2x4s. You can use hardwood if you wanted to, but it's really not necessary. The pieces that will fit between my 2x4s are all made out of scrap three quarter inch plywood. And the pipe that I'm using here is stainless steel. It's part of some kind of muffler system that I found online. It cost me about $20 altogether, stainless steel, what a deal. The reason that I'm using stainless steel is that you don't have to worry about burning off the zinc or getting zinc headaches later on. It'll also not rust in time. Once you remove the zinc or whatever's coating steel, it ends up becoming rusty later on and, and this will prevent that. It's also much more durable in the long run, so I think that this is worth it, especially, again, if you're paying $20, this was really inexpensive. You're going to need to use some kind of torch. I have a mag torch here, which is really nice. It doesn't require any kind of matches or anything to, to start it up. I love this thing and it locks, so you're not trying to adjust it and everything. This is a really nice item, but it does cost a little bit more money. I will be using drywall screws because they are the cheapest method to screwing things together that I could find in this size. You can buy a box of these for $5 and you're getting a whole bunch of them. But if you go up to wood screws, you're paying a lot more for a whole lot less. And really this doesn't take a lot to hold together. And finally, I do have a gasket here. This gasket is for stoves. This will help to bridge the gap between my pipe and the wood so that I don't end up making the wood hot and burn later on. All the items you can find on the website, I've got everything labeled so that it's easy. Just go down to the description below and you'll be able to find that link and, and get it. And everything is free, you don't have to pay anything on the website. The first thing that I need to do is find the center of my two by four so that I can cut my circle out. And I've set my marking gauge, I'm gonna double check to an inch and three quarters, which is going to be the center of my width of my two by four. And add a mark and we'll flip it around just in case. Yeah, it's not exactly three and a half inches. From the top of each, I need to go down two and a half inches. I'll set a compass to an inch and a quarter and I'll draw out the hole that I'll need later on for my pipe. You can take this over to the bandsaw and cut this hole out if you want, just by starting at the top and going right down the center in and then making that cut. If that's what you've got, that will work just fine. I am going to use a hole saw and cut this out. That's what I'll do now. The hole saw uses a twist bit, so I'm just adding a shallow quarter inch pilot hole with the brad point bit to start it now. We need to cut down the middle of this so that we can add our plywood. And this is a little bit too large of a size for the pipe. The pipe I think is about, is exactly two inches. Again, I use a two and a half inch bit, which is good because we can use the gasket on the inside. But I'm going to reduce this down to an inch and a quarter inch width for each of the four pieces. The way that I'm gonna attach mine now is I'm gonna add my small piece on the end here. I've got this little piece in the middle and then my larger base is going to fit on the end. Now I'm not gonna have the entire piece between the two here like this. I'm gonna have it separated like this, but you don't have to do it this way. If you want, you can put yours all the way in like this. You'll drill some holes and then you can attach it to the side of your bench with just a clamp. I will be using my vise and this will fit inside the vise. So that's why I want to have mine extended. You can do it either way. I don't think it's gonna matter. They'll both work. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark the back side of this so that I can add my screws later on. I've got these evenly spaced, but you obviously don't have to be perfect where you add your holes. I'll drill each of these out at an eighth of an inch with my drill press. If you don't have a drill press, a hand drill will work just fine. Now I've added a mark at eight inches and three inches, and this will be where the bottom side of my thinner board will be, and then my wider board here is going to be on the end. And again, if you want yours to be attached to the bench top, just slide it in like that. Now I can line some clamps up here and squeeze it down. I'm only gonna drill a hole on each piece and then add one screw. That way later on, I can make sure that the other side's lined up. 
With these screws in and everything lined up, I can go back and drill the other holes out. And then finish off by adding the screws. Now we can come in here and add the block on the ends, we'll add our pilot holes, and we'll also need to do a countersink on the end so that we don't end up splitting the wood. Add our screws and hope that we don't split anything. Now we need to work on the pipe itself. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by cutting this at 15 inches. At this point, you need to make a decision on whether or not you want to cut a hole in the bottom of this. The reason I want to do this is I want the flame to be directed on the inside so that it's not spilling out around the edges. That will make sure that I project all my heat towards the top instead of allowing it to radiate from the bottom up. I think that this will be a better way of not overheating the pipe in the future, but it's really up to you. If you'd rather just warm the bottom side and have it move up to the top, then you can do that. But right now I'm going to go ahead and cut a hole through the bottom so I can do this. Now we need to come in here and take the screws out for just the, the back piece here so that I can add the pipe in the middle. I wanna make sure that I put these on the right side, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark the letter X. Now I need to take my pipe and it needs to obviously go right inside that groove that we made. The gasket is six feet long, so I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this out. I'll cut it off at three feet. And I wanna wrap this around just a few times. I'm gonna overlap it and we'll go like this and I'll come back around. With both pieces put on, I can line this up again. Like that, find the X, fit on here like this. I can squeeze this down and it just needs to be tight enough, obviously, that it's not gonna unravel or pull out. That's it. Before we get into this, let's talk about propane tanks. I'm gonna be talking about camp propane tanks, which you can get at any store. I think you can get it at Walmart even. And the reason I'm gonna be using this is because it is a little bit wider and it won't fall over, as well as it being a lot shorter than the other one. If I add this, this is gonna be the perfect height to get right next to my tube. Torches do get very hot, but it's gonna be important to have a valve on the end of it that will allow us to bring our flame down. We really don't need a whole lot. And in the middle, you'll even turn it away and turn it off because it really doesn't take a lot to heat this thing up. Here we are at the pipe, and what I wanna do now is I wanna turn my torch on, and I'm gonna bring the flame down. I don't need a whole lot. And then I'm gonna move this around so the flame goes right inside that hole. Now I can turn it on a little bit more to give it a little bit of heat, but we're not looking for a whole lot here. We wanna make sure that this gets hot enough that the water actually breaks off of it instead of sitting on the top and then boiling. Right there you can see it's actually getting pretty close, but it's still sitting on the surface just a little bit. And that's beating off a little bit. Again, we're looking to get between 200 and 300 degrees. It's, it's not a lot, but once we get to the right temperature, to the point where we're gonna be ready to use this, we're gonna turn this down really low. And then even if it starts to burn a little bit, we'll even pull this away or turn it off and work on it and then bring it back in the middle as it cools down a little bit. The nice thing about this pipe is that it is very thin so it heats up very quickly. You're not waiting on it for a long time. But on the other hand, you are going to have to worry about it cooling off a lot more than something like a thick pipe would do. I found with the hot pipe method that you can get away with bending things like pine, which is normally very difficult to do. But you're gonna to wanna to have some kind of water chamber. I've got a 44 inch drainage pipe here that has a cap on the end. And I'll really quickly show you how I built this. It 
really all you have to do is wait about 10 minutes and then you can fill it full of water. I think best practice is probably to go a few hours beforehand and soak your strips. Now, as soon as you put this in the water, they're gonna to wanna to float back up because wood floats in water. I found using a softball wiffle ball that you can actually press it inside and it'll squeeze up against the walls and keep everything submerged. It's optional, but I really am happy with this setup. You'll also wanna have a spray bottle with you because as you use it, it's going to get dry and you don't want it to burn the wood. So make sure you have a spray bottle. But let's go ahead and go on with the bending. The process is very straightforward. We're gonna heat up a pipe and then we're gonna bend stuff around it. So like before, I'll start this up. I'll lock this in place and I'm going to place it inside the hole in the back. We're gonna give it some time to warm up. And that's gonna be hot enough right there. You can see it bouncing off the surface. Remember that this is going to get very hot. So you really don't wanna to touch the pipe and even the wood. But all I have to do is press it on the pipe and push down. I'm already getting a bend here. I'm gonna come in here and spray it again. And that's really the trick is to keep spraying it. I have a little bit of burning on the back. So I need to keep that in mind. Go ahead and lower this down a little bit because I am getting a little too hot. I think that there is a little bit more of a skill to this. It takes a little bit of time to get this down just right. I do get a little bit of burning on the back. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that I've been doing this for a long time. It's kind of a new skill that I've been working on, but it does take a little bit of time to, to realize by sound and feel turn it off. if you are burning the back or not. I've got some wood slices that I made the other day with one of the bite sizes, but I can press this down. It's starting to smoke already, so yep, I'm drying out on the back. Now I need to probably back this off. It's probably pretty hot right now. I found if you take a thin piece of stock you can also put that on the back and help bend. You're also not touching it. That helps to bend it around, give you a little bit of leverage. Now, ideally, the best way to do this would be to have some kind of form to press this into, and you would just basically press it in and clamp it up real quick. I'll try with the thinner strip here now. I'm not entirely sure what this is. It might be walnut. There we go, just a fun little shape. It's really easy to do, there's not a whole lot to it. If you notice, most of these have more of a slight bend to them. If you wanna get a nice fine curve, you'll wanna use something called a bending or back strap. It's basically just a piece of metal that's the same length as the stock that you plan on bending. I've got my stock here wet, and I'm gonna put some tin vice grips on either end. So I wanna stretch this out and keep it tensioned all the way across. Put a second one on this side. I'll add a little bit more water to it. But now I can take this and I can bend it as I'm heating it up and get a much tighter radius on this. You can literally bend this in half with this technique. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you might make yourself. Plans are all gonna be online on the website, which is gonna be in the description. If you do leave a comment, thank the patrons because they keep all this stuff free and allow the website to continue going. And remember to keep making things.